I'm Keith Olbermann and this is The Resistance. Do not be distracted by the latest noise. The earth-shattering news here remains the revelation of how the now ex-Russian ambassador to this country, Sergei Kislyak, was reportedly intercepted by intelligence agencies while updating his Kremlin masters about his two meetings with the then Trump campaign senior advisor Jeff Sessions. It is case closed for the Trump campaign's attempt to collude, conspire, collaborate with the Russians to illegally interfere with this country's 2016 presidential election. For a year or more, the facts and the reported facts about Trump and Russia have cascaded down upon us like dust from the topmost bookshelf in the oldest of libraries. As always, creating one timeline of all the seemingly separate random events clarifies the truth in the cascade of dust wonderfully. April 27, 2016, the Russian ambassador Kislyak attends Trump's first major foreign policy speech at the Mayflower Hotel in Washington. Trump and Kislyak meet, perhaps briefly, perhaps privately. Sessions will later say he does not recall meeting Kislyak at all. The new report in the Washington Post has Kislyak telling the Kremlin he and Sessions, quote, discussed campaign-related matters, including policy issues important to Moscow. June 3, 2016, per his own email chain, Trump Jr. is offered a meeting at which he will be given, quote, very high-level and sensitive information that would incriminate Hillary as part of Russia and its government's support for Mr. Trump. June 7, 2016, Trump Jr. confirms that meeting, and three hours later, Trump himself promises a speech the following week about Hillary Clinton's, quote, corrupt dealings with the Russians. June 9, 2016, Trump Jr., Manafort, and Kushner meet with the Russians at Trump Tower, and 10 to 20 minutes after the meeting ends, Trump tweets disparagingly about Clinton's emails, and he uses the number 33,000 for the first time. June 15, 2016, the hacker Guccifer 2.0 posts documents hacked from the computers of the Democratic National Committee. July 7, 2016, Trump foreign policy advisor Carter Page travels to Moscow ostensibly to give a speech to a Russian economics institute, broadly criticizing U.S. foreign policy. He will later be investigated on an accusation of meeting with the Russian leader in charge of monitoring and meddling with the American election. July 18, 2016, during the Republican National Convention, Ambassador Kislyak meets with Carter Page and Jeff Sessions. And in the new report, Kislyak informed, quote, his superiors in Moscow who were eager for updates about the candidates' positions. July 27, 2016, at the last press conference of his presidential campaign, Trump urges Russia to find Clinton's emails. September 8th, 2016, Jeff Sessions meets with Ambassador Kislyak in Sessions' own Senate office. Even in the latest report, the intelligence sources will not reveal what, if anything, they have learned of Kislyak's message to the Kremlin about this, his third meeting with Sessions. October 7th, 2016, with Trump operative Roger Stone having repeatedly boasted of contact with Guccifer 2.0 and Julian Assange, and then tweeted about Clinton's campaign chairman, it will soon be Podesta's time in the barrel, and tweeted about Assange, and tweeted about payload coming, WikiLeaks begins to publish 20,000 pages of emails stolen from Podesta's computer. December 1st or 2nd, 2016, Kislyak goes to Trump Tower, meets with Kushner and incoming National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. Kushner now admits to this meeting, and Kushner proposes using Russian embassies, consulates, or other Russian intelligence-controlled communication systems to allow the Trump transition team to talk directly to Moscow without Americans knowing about it. January 10th, 2017, at his confirmation hearing, Sessions testifies under oath before the Senate, quote, I didn't have, did not have communications with the Russians. May 10th, 2017, Trump in the Oval Office reportedly reveals classified intelligence, later reported to be Israeli penetration of ISIS, to the Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov, to Ambassador Kislyak, with a Russian photographer present. June 13th, 2017, Sessions testifies to the Senate and again denies he met with Kislyak at the Mayflower Hotel, says he does not even remember any brief interaction with him. 
July 7th, 2017, Trump meets Vladimir Putin with no other American official present for a private meeting initially undisclosed at the G20 summit in Germany. July 8th, 2017, Trump Jr. issues a statement claiming his Russian meeting was about adoptions. It is later reported the statement was written by White House staff and approved by Trump. July 22nd, 2017, Trump matter-of-factly claims that he has the complete power to pardon. Presumably he has been informed that he can only pardon someone who is guilty of a crime. July 24th, 2017, Kushner issues prepared remarks before his appearance to the Senate Intelligence Committee. He admits to attending Junior's meeting with the Russians and to setting up a back channel to talk to the Kremlin in December while insisting the back channel was not a back channel. The possible innocent explanations of any individual link in this damnable chain have long since evaporated. We have in the White House a president who, if he is not an agent of the Russian government, might as well be one. Get him out while we still have the mechanisms with which to do so. Resist. Remove. Peace.